In this video, we're going to look at this algebraic proof question. It says prove that the difference between a whole number and the cube of this number is always a multiple of six. And this is an example of a three mark exam question. So firstly, what you want to recognize is how to write this uh, sentence algebraically. So it says the difference between a whole number and the cube of this number. Uh, now we could write a whole number this just means any number, we could just give that a variable or an unknown like x, and then the cube of this number would be x cubed, or whatever letter you pick, it's going to be that letter cubed. So we could write this sentence as x cubed, take x. So that will represent the difference between a whole number and the cube of this number. And by the way, I should have suggested if you want to give this question a go yourself, Pause the video now. Okay, so I'm going to continue then. So we want to prove that this difference is always a multiple of six. What you want to start with here is to factorize this expression here. If I factorize an x out of both terms, I'll be left with x times x squared take one. And then you need to recognize in these brackets here, we have what's called the difference of two squares. So x is squared and one is a square number. Um, now, with the difference of two squares, I've made a video on that, you can write the difference of two squares as x plus one and x take one. That's because you've, if you expand out those two brackets, you'll end up with x squared take one when you simplify everything. So x squared take one, we can write as x plus one x take one, and then we end up with x cubed take x equal to x times x plus one times x take one. Okay, now we have a different expression representing the difference between a whole number and the cube of this number. Now you need to recognize something about this expression. This actually represents three consecutive numbers. So this expression is representing three, whoops, consecutive, consecutive numbers. And there's something you should know about if you have three consecutive numbers in a row. Firstly, one of them is going to be even. You cannot possibly get three consecutive numbers and you know not have an even number. And one is also either going to be a multiple of three, uh, one multiple of three, or it's going to be a multiple of six. Okay, so whenever you have this case of three consecutive numbers in a row, you'll have an even number definitely within those three numbers, and you'll also either have a multiple of three or a multiple of six. So let's just write some numbers just to be really clear about what I'm talking about. So if you pick any three consecutive numbers, remember consecutive means numbers in a row. So if we look at two, for example, that's an even number then those three consecutive numbers, you have one, two, three, three is a multiple of three, two is an even number. If you multiply an even number by a multiple of three, you'll always get a multiple of six. So this expression therefore must represent a multiple of six. Whichever three consecutive numbers you pick here, you're always going to have that situation. So for example, let's say x equaled five, the next number is a multiple of six, right? So we're already including that. By the way, the six here would be the x plus one. Okay, so if x equals five, x plus one is six. And this expression would be five times six times four. Clearly a multiple of six. Okay, so to finish this question off, then all you really need to say is that uh, this expression this expression will always have uh, an even number and a multiple of three or six. So what you need to finish off with is this expression will always have a factor of two and a factor of three. Therefore, it will always be a multiple of six. When I say factor of two, that means an even number. When I say factor of three, that's either three or six or nine or 12 or, and so on. Okay, so there you go. That is how to answer that type of algebraic proof question. Thanks for watching.